We are one week into this brand new amazing format. Uh, uh, by amazing, it's Snake Eye 2.0, but it's actually kind of diverse and a lot better than that last boo-boo stain of a format. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the very beautiful most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1400 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I really do appreciate all of the support. We got to talk about this new format. We're a week in. It's now the, what, 22nd? Yeah, the 22nd. It's been exactly a week since the new ban list went into effect. We have the YCS rally results to look at. We have a lot of data. We have a lot of things that we can look at now and say, how's this format? And honestly, this format is a lot more healthy than last format. You know, you have to think about Borlode Savage and Baron were the two main Omni negates that decks were playing, and Snake Eye just felt so oppressive. Snake Eye as an engine is tier zero. I would argue as a deck it's tier one. You know, you look at the top eight of YCS Rally, everything was Snake Eye variants with one Labyrinth deck and one Despy Miranda deck. The Labyrinth deck came in second, running it back to second, even though it probably should have ran it back to first place had the guy not misplayed with Backjack, but that's just besides the point. When you look at the top eight, especially, 75% was Snake Eyes, right? But it was different versions of Snake Eyes. So you had pure Snake Eye. You had Cash Tira Snake Eyes uh, piloted by DB Grinder, which was really funny. I think I talked about it in my video from the other day where uh, one of the guys was interviewing him and he's like, no, like I'm, I'm here to win. I'm just here to play and like whatever. Like he kind of gave like a cold shoulder response. Like I don't know if he was just trolling or being a jerk, but I don't know. I guess he's just like an arrogant type of guy. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of funny if, if he was just trolling. Um, but we saw him playing Cash Tier Snake Eyes. We saw over 50% representation of Snake Eyes in the top 32. Again, that does transit to Tier 0, but it's different variants of that, right? You could still play Runic Stun and see success. We saw a Flunder deck make top 32. It's a rogue deck, but it goes to show you can see success with other decks. Snake Eye is a Tier 0 engine. In a tier one deck, I would argue, because it can the engine itself can be thrown in so many different things. You know, if you're playing Fire King Snake Eye, Fire King Snake Eye is not necessarily tier zero, but it's tier one because of what the Snake Eye engine offers. So Snake Eye as an engine is tier zero, as a deck as a whole and whatever, I would say it's tier one. But there are a lot of different decks that you can play this format despite that. You know, you can play Runic Sun and see success. We saw a Plunder Patrol Runic deck make top 32. You could play that and see success. You could play Flunder and see success. Voiceless Voice, see success. And the names go on and on. So in regards to what decks you can play and how diverse or healthy this format is, it's actually really healthy. Like even moving into Legacy of Destruction... We get the Tempai stuff, which really can't play the Snake Eye stuff, at least from what I've tested. But it's a very good going second deck that if you play certain different engines, I don't want to give away the goo that I'm using because I think I've already talked about it and also because I don't see anyone else on it. <laughs> um, but there are ways that you can make the deck be good going first, whether it's playing, you know, Dragon Link stuff to make Boral End and end on that, whatever the case may be, or like a Zelantis package with Promethean and Raging Phoenix that's that's good that's well and good now when it comes to like the online scene specifically i play on edo pro i don't want to have to deal with talking to people and arguing on dueling book i think it's fucking garbage and dueling nexus is filled with nothing but trolls and like rogue players who don't like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. like every time i go on dueling nexus it's nothing but rogue players which honestly really sucks right now on edo pro i'm making dual notes that say meta only uh, or like, you know, testing, lead format only, meta, blah, blah, blah. And like, holy jumping banana balls. I'm getting some really bad fucking players and I'm getting people who I don't know if they're trolling or just think that their rogue stun deck is meta when it's not, it's garbage. But like, I'm getting these people playing like just straight stun with Fossil Dina and Decisive Battle, Necro Valley and shit. I'm getting people playing Runic Stun. I'm getting people playing Flunder. And it's not that these decks are bad. They're going to be good moving into Legacy of Destruction format. But number one, these people don't know what the fuck that they're doing. Like they're making just really obvious misplays, which is funny. I'll take the free win, but it doesn't help me play test for like Snake Eyes and Voiceless. I have barely played any sort of Voiceless Voice or Snake Eyes like since YCS Rally. It's been pretty much nothing but Rogue. I've seen some Melodious and stuff, and I think Melodious is going to be decent post-lead format, but... 
I think it's just not there. I think that the boards it can set up are cute, but a couple of hand traps just kind of fart on it and it dies, especially once people learn the choke points. I think the deck's going to kind of fall off. I think the same thing's going to happen to Tempai too, if I'm being completely honest. Once people learn how the deck functions, once people learn, oh, hey, if you just shut them off the Chung Dora, then they just lose, um, at least before Infinite Forbidden, it's going to be a really tough time. And so because of that, it's been really annoying to try and play test. Like I've gone against... Uh, what was it, like a 40-45 card trap Eldritch deck, I've gone against mirror matches where they're only playing 14 card extra decks, and they don't know what they're doing, and I'm just smashing them, and then other times they're beating me just because I'm a going second deck, and they're able to set up Fossildine and stuff, and I'm like, congratulations, you're playing the correct meta call against my particular deck, like, that doesn't make you good, and like, you might be thinking, well, Avery, you just said that these decks are rogue, like, these are good options, yes, but when I'm asking for meta only because I already know what I need to do to beat these decks, you're not helping me as a player test or get better like you're just wasting my fucking time so i tell these people like leave like i ask for meta only my dual name you need a gtfo and if they just want to troll whatever i just quit out and i go back in it's it's not the biggest deal in the world it's just annoying that all these bad players are trying to play these decks that they think they know what they're doing and they really don't i just went against earlier today someone playing the yugi the the yugi retrain cards like the tricolor gadget which that deck is garbage like i've talked about before how garbage that deck is and it's garbage uh the dude someone tricolor gadget i impermed it he set tc boo because he just opened up the one of because he draws better than me. Uh, I go to summon a monster. He activates TC Boo. I'm like, that's the only reason why you fucking won is because you have TC Boo up. And that's the other thing is that even though we're not seeing them a lot because they are one ofs, cards like Anti Spell, Rivalry, Gozen, and TC Boo feel like such sacky cards. Like even just a week into this format, they're good cards, but there's a reason why they're at one and they feel so sacky at one like i feel like that they just need to be banned now you might be thinking well avery you know balancing them at one you know you'll you have to play you know a bunch of them as one of us to hopefully see them and i get that but it just feels so sacky when you get hit with them and you just don't draw the out like oh just draw draw the out five head which jokes on you i'm six heads now bitch <laughs> but like if you don't see the out, like, it's just kind of toxic, in my opinion. Like, it's really just kind of asinine. And, like, then these players think that they're good. And it's like, you opened up the one of, like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's it's so annoying to me and it bothers me so much. Um, but the, the, the Yugi cards, all of that to say, they're bulk. Like, you're either going to use the Melodious cards, you're going to use the Tempai cards... Or you're selling off everything as bulk. Because really, this this set, which is crazy. I know we're kind of going on a tangent here, but this all mixes into this format. Moving into Legacy of Destruction format, Legacy of Destruction is actually like the type of set that we should have in every set. And by that, I mean the cards that are good are low rarity. And the cards that are high rarity is more like fan servicey casual stuff like you can mix in a couple good cards that are high rarity like you have to sell the set somehow but like all the yugi cards which are just bulk because the deck is garbage uh, like they're all high rarity so like anyone who wants to be nostalgic for the anime and play those garbage cards at least they're playing high rarity garbage cards and they're going to be cheap because of the fact the deck is crap so like you know it's cute. It's adorable. It's definitely a set made for the consumer, both casual and competitive. Because if you want to play Tempai outside of Pi Doors being like $20 super rares right now on pre sale, the deck is really cheap. Oh, well, Avery, I need to get Trident Draggy on. Would you rather? I, I, this is going to sound like a bad answer, but would you rather spend $145 on the deck, $100 roughly for Trident Draggy on, than like $45 to $50 for the core, depending on what you play? Or do you want to spend $1,000 on like a Snake Eyes deck? Take your pick, pimp, because the deck is still like nine hundred to a thousand dollars right now. But even though the deck's nine hundred to a thousand dollars, you have all these other options. It's not like tier element tier zero where you were playing tier element or nothing at all. You have these other options, and that is a good thing. You know, even though I'm kind of ragging on the rogue players right now, it's very healthy and very good that we have all of these other options. You don't want it to just be you have to play something snake eyes related or you lose the ball game. That's not a good format. The fact that we have something as powerful as snake eyes. And we can still play other decks and be successful is a very fantastic thing. You know, I was very much against this new ban list. And now even just a week in and seeing the results of Rally, I actually really like it. You know, I, you, I didn't realize, I think many people didn't realize that 
basically Borlode and Baron are the only Omni negates that are good in the game. You know, you have other Infernity Barrier-esque cards, maybe in like trap form or archetype specific form. You know, one of them that comes to mind is the Manadium Counter Trap. I don't remember the name of it, but it's basically an Infernity Barrier. It's an Omni negate, but it's specifically for Manadium. You can't play that in just anything. It's not a synchro monster that's generic like Baron or Borlode that you can play in any deck. And I think that that's a fantastic thing that they banned both of those cards. And really, it's because of Snake Eyes, right? Like, if they were to hit the Snake Eyes cards, I think Baron and Borlo could come back to one at some point. But leaving them banned, getting rid of Omni Negates out of the equation of the game is a fantastic thing. And I actually really do like this format. I'm really excited for Legacy of Destruction format. Just anyone that sees me on EDO Pro, stop playing Rogue. Like, let me play Test Against Voiceless Voice and Snake Eyes. Decks that actually matter, not these garbage like rogue table 500 decks like play those but actually know what you're doing like i had a dude chain block incorrectly he did stree on chain link one and pin chain link two and i ashed him he admitted it was a misclick but still like you misplay like that's a locals mistake oh guys with all that being said it is a healthy format i actually really do enjoy it so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you like this format? Do you think it's booty booty butt cheeks with a side of liquid ass with big old chunks inside? Or do you really like this format? Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.